Most robust apps are utilizing and displaying data of some sort coming from an external source. That source might be online in the cloud and a subset maybe of a database being provided by an API. It could be a local file that's on our device. But one of the most popular formats for that data these days is JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. And we're gonna start with external data using JSON. Since we do talk about object-oriented programming, it sort of makes sense to work with data objects, and that's what JSON provides us. So it's an easy way to work with JSON, and, and actually an even easier way to do that in MAUI using the Newtonsoft JSON NuGet package. And that's what we'll utilize in this program. JSON is an array-based file that is an organization of objects with each object containing key value pairs, the keys in a string, and then the value can be pretty much any other data type, including strings, Boolean, numbers, even other objects. In our project, we can click the add item at the bottom. So we're using a tab bar, tab items, and we can add a person to our database. So I'm using all celebrity names. So Thomas Jefferson, and providing an occupation, we'll enter president. I'm going to add the record. I'm told the record was added to my list. And I keep adding more records here if I wanted. I can also get a copy of all the JSON data. And, and that clipboard then could be copied to an email or to a text file on the device if I wanted to export this some way. As I'm adding records, I can go to the data list. And I can see all the records that have been added. I'm going to scroll down through the list. And there's my Thomas Jefferson. I'm going to click that. And I'm going to get details from this master list. And I see the name Thomas Jefferson and a little bio about him. Now I know what you're thinking, I didn't enter that bio. I'm gonna use OpenAI chat GPT to generate a brief bio for us. Since artificial intelligence and chat GPT are kind of hot topics these days, let's look at how we can leverage that in our application. It's actually amazingly simple to do. Now from here, I could dismiss this and go back to my list. I could bring up somebody else and say Alfred Hitchcock. I could make a modification. Maybe I misspelled something. I could update it. I'm going to click Cancel. I can also delete the record from the list. And again, I'm going to click Cancel. So that is our project. Let me show you one thing that when you first open up the project, there's no data that exists. In fact, the data file doesn't even exist at that point. So because we're storing this data in an JSON file, it's in our applications directory on the device. We're going to create that file, but initially it doesn't exist. So we get this no data currently exists, add some records. As soon as we start adding records, it's going to create that data file for us. When we exit the program and come back, it reads our JSON data that was saved to the applications directory and deserializes that into our list of the person model that we're going to create. And I'm told here that there were 42 records that I had created and saved, and so it read those in. I mostly did this to verify that everything was working correctly. You could comment this out if you wanted, maybe especially before if you were to, to distribute a program like this. You may not, your user may not care how many records there are, or you may want your user to know how many records there are. That's up to you as a designer. So I'm going to click OK. And now if I go back into data, all those records are there. And again, I can click on one and see the information. So in our XAML code, we're going to use a collection view. That collection view is the list that we see displayed here of all of our records. We're also going to use an activity indicator. So if I click on a name, you're going to see a little circular indicator telling me to wait while well, it generates that chat GPT information. It has to go out to, to chat GPT and bring back what it generated and display it here. So it takes a, maybe a second to do that. As I mentioned, we're going to read and write data files to the applications directory. We're also going to save something to the preferences. So it's a slightly different way. Preferences allow us to keep track of things that might change the interface a little bit. And this may be the background color would be a good example of that or the username. In this case, we're going to use preferences to store the most recent ID used for adding a record. We're going to automatically add that ID based on that number and just simply increment it each time through. 
So I need to keep track of what was the number the last time I used the program. And then let's add to that. So that's gonna be stored in preferences. It's a very quick way of adding things. Preferences are a great way of doing data persistence because it happens very fast, a little bit faster than reading and writing to the applications directory. We're gonna do CRUD operations on our data. So create, read, update, and delete. As I mentioned, we'll use ChatGPT. I'm gonna do a bunch of dialogues. And we've used the display alert in the past. We use the display prompt async, which allows us to get an item from the user, a little field for them to enter something. But we're also gonna use some custom pages that we can display as dialogues. So one of which was the update data record. That's a XAML class that I created, but we're gonna use that as a dialogue using, using the community toolkit pop-up. And that's a NuGet package. I'm gonna cancel. This details dialogue is a similar pop-up from a NuGet package called mop-ups. And the reason I used both was if we used a toolkit pop-up for this, I couldn't add another pop-up on top of that. But a mop-up actually inherits from the content page and allows me to then to also use other mop-ups, or in this case, I chose to stick with pop-ups. So we'll look at all those different types of dialogues. I'm not expecting you to do this from scratch, so let me go in and, and walk you through my code review. In the Canvas course site within the assignment project instructions module, you can scroll down, you'll find the instructions for the project, but there's also an assets folder here that is zipped that contains the fonts and the images and a little bit of text to save you some typing uh, in this project. So download that and ex extract it and then go into Visual Studio. In Visual Studio, the first thing I did was go into the resources, open up the images, and add those images that are in the zip file. So those are the add icon, the data icon, the home 24, the icon 24, and then the icon 48 delete and icon 48 update. Then I also added the Arial and Arial bold fonts. Next, I created a models folder by going to the solution and choosing to add a new folder. And then in that folder, I chose to add a new class and I named it person. And this is just an empty C-sharp class. And then I created the content of that class. Before we get into the code for the person.cs, let's go into the tools and choose manage NuGet packages. We're going to add some NuGet packages to our project, one of which is the Newtonsoft JSON. So I'd like you to browse and find the Newtonsoft JSON and add that to your project. There's an add package. We're also going to add the mopups the community toolkit.maui and the rest sharp. We'll use the rest sharp in accessing the chat GPT API. Then we're going to go over to the maui program.cs file and we're going to add that we're using the community toolkit, using the mopups.hosting, and then we're going to add in a couple information couple lines here in our uh, create Maui app method. So we're going to specify under builder.use Maui community toolkit dot configure mopups. And that will allow us to use the toolkit and the mopups in our application. If you want, you can also add in the Arial and Arial bold fonts. You want to give them different names. I didn't bother to do that. I just used them as they were named. Make sure you save that file. Then we're gonna go back into our person.cs class that we created, and we're gonna add in a directive using newtonsoft.json. And then here's our person class. We have six fields or properties we're gonna use. ID, last name, first name, occupation, full name, and initials. And we'll make all of those public, and we'll include getters and setters. Then we have a constructor where all we're gonna pass is the first name, the last name, and the occupation. This will come from our adding new records. That's all the information we're providing. But then we're gonna use some routines here to 
determine what the initials are and what the full name is, and then add in an ID for that record. And that ID will be auto incremented each time we add a new record. I have another constructor that has all that information in it. And this is for when it reads in the JSON, it needs a JSON constructor to take the existing data and to create a new object from that. So that's why you have this little attribute of JSON constructor so it knows that that is what JSON should be using when it builds a new object. And so there we're passing all those different values, the ID, the last name, the first name, the occupation, the full name, and the initials in setting each of those directly. I, I included a get record method to return the first name, the last name, and the occupation in parentheses. I actually don't think I ended up using that, but it's there for us if we want to have that information. I have an update record that is creating the initials and the full name, and then the get initials and get full name methods that were employed up here in our constructor. Those are all public and can be called from other classes. We're going to use ChatGPT from OpenAI.com to generate brief bios for the people that we enter into the database. If you've never played around, played around with ChatGPT, I would encourage you to go to chat.openai.com, create an account, and just try having it generate some text for you. So I'm going to type in here, write a paragraph about csharp.net Maui. And there's my paragraph about csharp.net Maui multi-platform app UI. So it's pulling information from lots of different sources and creating something original. Um, it's not just copying one source, it's combining multiple sources together. We can also say something like, give me a list of 10 US Revolutionary War Heroes. And so it gives us our list of 10 and a brief bio about each one. We're going to use ChatGPT to write brief bios about people in our database. Let's take Betsy Ross. And so we'll feed the API that information. It's going to return this paragraph or something very similar to it for us to display. Now, every time we run this, we will get a different bio will never be the same two times in a row, but it will probably include most of the same information. So play around, make, make yourself familiar with ChatGPT, and then, and then you'll need to go into openai.com, go over to the menu and choose API, and you're gonna to need to set, again, set up an account and get an API key. So you can scroll down, click the Get Started, and you'll sign up, and they will give you a key, which is a long string of letters. You'll want to copy that key, and then, then back in Visual Studio, we're going to go to the Maui program.cs. We're going to create a public static string variable. You can name it anything you like. I named mine SFH, my initials, open AI key, equals, and you're going to paste in that key string. And then we can just refer to that key string by the variable name. Next, we're going to add the three pages for our app. So I'm going to right click on my project and choose Add, New Class. We want a .NET MAUI content page of, X, of XAML. And the first one's going to be Home. I'm going to create that. I'm going to repeat that process. This one will be called data list. And then another one, this will be add records. Now I'm gonna create three more that are gonna be our pop-up dialogues. And we're gonna use the community toolkit and the mop-ups to access these. 
But let's go ahead and create these now. So add new class. Again, this will be a .NET MAUI content page of XAML. The first one is going to be person pop-up. And on this one, I used a capital U. On the other two for pop-up, I use lowercase u. Just be aware of that as I show you my code. So if you do it a little bit differently, make sure the case sensitivity matches. The next one is update record pop-up. And the last one is delete record pop-up. So now we have those showing here in our project. If we go back to our person.cs file, you'll see the home is no longer have that squiggly under it because it now recognizes the home page, but it doesn't recognize the next rec ID variable. So we do need to create that before we try to test this so we don't get an error. So I'm going to go to the homepage XAML.cs file, and I'm going to add in that variable reference. We're going to make it public static. It's an integer next rec ID. This is going to be stored in our preferences file to keep track of what the next ID number is sequentially as we add records. And so now back in the person CS, that squiggly has gone away. It recognizes it's there. Even though it doesn't have any value yet, uh, it won't cause an error because we're not really referencing it to get the value at this point. Well, let's go into our app shell .xaml code, and we're going to set up our tab bar. I'm going to replace the shell content with my tab bar code. And so here we're doing a tab bar with three tab items, one for home, one for data, and one for add. It allows, allows us to add the records with the icons we imported and set up the routing for those three pages. At this point, I want to test my application. So I'm going to choose the iPhone 14 in my case and choose whatever emulator like, Android or iPhone. Let's build it. There's our project. We don't have any information here on the home page yet. It just says, welcome to .NET MAUI. Same thing on the data page and same thing on the add page. You might want to go in and maybe just add like a label that shows those different pages, but you can look at the top up here and see that that is changing as we go from add records to data list to home. So that's the end of our phase one. We've set up the structure for us to be able to navigate through those three pages and to maintain our records for the people that we're going to add in with the person.cs data model. And we added our NuGet packages that we'll reference in the code as we move into phase two. In the next video, we'll begin to build this out with our three different pages. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.